Did you know that your weight gain may be caused by poor nutrition and hormonal imbalance? However, a major contributing factor may be hypothyroidism. So what can you do to get rid of those stubborn excess pounds? Dr. David Sheridan is joining me today to discuss some solutions. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Sheridan. And uh, let's just discuss the effect of the thyroid, horm uh, thyroid gland and the thyroid hormones on overall health. Sure. What exactly is, where is the thyroid gland located and what does it do? The thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland in the front of the trachea at the lower part of the neck, anterior portion of the neck. It secretes uh, thyroid hormones, primarily T3 and T4. Uh, T4 is an inactive form of the hormone. T3 is the active form. And these hormones get into the bloodstream, go to the cells. These, T3 primarily, but for sake of argument, thyroid hormone actually adjusts the me metabolic rate of the cells, therefore the tissues. So that's what determines how well each tissue does what it does. So it has to do with energy production. Is that what metabolism? Energy production, um, moods, uh, clarity of thought, the ability to think and concentrate, keep your thoughts straight. Well, if a person has an inability to properly assimilate pro their thyroid hormone into their cells and their energy production is low, how does that affect weight? It's a, a factor in weight gain. I mean, that part, remember, part of our metabolic rate or metabolic activity is weight regulation. So people that are low thyroid, their metabolism slows down, they don't generate a, a, as much heat, they don't use as many calories, and they can easily have trouble losing weight. And even, uh, of course, we, we hear guests come in all the time and say, look, I've really cut my diet back, I, I try to exercise, and I can't lose any weight at all. When does this happen, uh, this problem with low thyroid uh, symptoms and low thyroid problems, hypothyroidism, when do we see it normally occur? And in, in, in what sex? Is it men over women or women it's over women men? It's women more than men, but men can suffer with this as well. I would say probably 30s and 40s are when we start to see it more, but you do see it more with age. But we actually screen newborns for this because newborns that are born with low thyroid function, that can be catastrophic to their development. Now that's cretinism. Cretinism. So very commonly we'll see women in midlife in their 30s and 40s, especially after childbirth. Mm -hmm. Now what happens in a woman's biochemical or physiological in her system physiologically or biochemically to a woman that would cause her to develop low thyroid after childbirth or in midlife? Well, I think several things are involved. We certainly have poor nutrition in this country and a lot of pollution, but we also have this estrogen dominant problem that we see so much where around midlife or after childbirth, a woman as she's aging and losing her hormones slowly, she can lose progesterone much faster than she loses estrogen. So again, the um, estrogen dominance, the term we use, doesn't mean she has an estrogen excess. She has a progesterone deficiency, allowing estrogen to have an exaggerated effect. It interferes with the utilization of thyroid hormone at the cellular level. It interferes with the conversion of T4 to T3. Remember, T4 is the inactive right. form, essentially, and T3 the active form. Estrogen dominance also uh, causes the liver to create more thyroid binding globulin. Now, this is a normal binding hormone, or a binding protein, rather, that we have in our bloodstream that binds thyroid hormone. But when a hormone is bound to the protein, that hormone's not usable. So you can actually have labs that look pretty much the same if you just uh, use total hormone levels. What you don't see there is that more and more of the total is bound to proteins and less and less is free and available to the cells. And so if you get the metabolism up, you get people on thyroid and they correct their diet, can they expect that they'll be able to lose weight? Weight is a, a tough issue. Remember, this is a, a, a multifactorial problem, but uh, weight loss, yes. We do see people lose weight. Some lose more than others. Some lose it faster than others. But if you have a thyroid problem, if you're hypothyroid, uh, it, it's very common to be able, as, as we see folks come in the office, patients come in the office and they say, I diet, I exercise, and the weight's not changing. And if you don't have proper thyroid function, th that's a common result. Well, good. Thanks so much for you're joining with us today, Dr. Sheridan. Appreciate your comments.
Looking for a diet program to help you keep your New Year's resolution? Well, just stay tuned because Dr. Don Ellsworth is here to discuss adverse effects of yeast overgrowth on your health. He'll also share some tips on how yeast-free eating helps with weight loss.